So let's move on and try to make things better. This is what Flownet is gonna give you. This is what Flownet version two is gonna give you. So we already solved the problem, but we are not happy with our solution because we can do better. And Flownet is gonna have some problems with small displacements when the pixel is not moving too much. And then it's gonna have some noisy artifacts in the estimated flow. Let's try to fix them. But first, before we do that, let's take a closer look at Flownet and see what we were doing. The architecture that I just showed you is Flownet S. It is trained on the chairs, flying chairs data, and it is trained for a short period of time. And that's giving you this endpoint error. And here the lower is better. If you train on chairs, but you train for longer, things are actually gonna improve. So just train for longer is one improvement. Then lower your learning rate and then train again, or you can call it fine tuning. Fine tune on the same data and you're gonna get some more improvements. There is another data set. It's a 3D version of chairs. You can train on that for longer or even fine tune. You don't get much improvement. You can mix those two data sets together you get some improvement, but the best one is the case that you first train on chair for a long time and then fine tune on the things 3D data. And that's giving you the best. The other solution is Flownet C architecture. I didn't explain it in the previous paper. I'm gonna explain it here. This one is more costly. The architecture is more costly, but then it's doing much better. So these are the two observations. One is training on chair fine tuning on things 3D helps. The other one is Flownet C is a better architecture. It's more expensive though, but it's giving the better numbers. What is this Flownet C? C stands for correlation. Let's say you have two tensors or two feature maps. It has a height, it has a width, and it has a number of channels. You can look at that in terms of functions where you take as input the pixels and then you're outputting vectors. So these are equivalent. You can write down the correlation between a pixel from F1, another pixel from F2, for patches around these two pixels. How can you do it? You can pick a patch. This is just a patch around the first pixel and the second pixel. The first pixel is coming from the first feature map. The second pixel is coming from the second feature map. You are in a neighborhood of these two pixels. So these are two patches around X1 and X2. Each one of those, X1 plus O, is a pixel within that patch. It has C channels. The other one is the same thing. It has C channels. You can multiply them together, dot product. It's gonna give you a scalar and then add everything up. So this is gonna give you the correlation between a patch around X1, a patch around X2 in a neighborhood that has size 2K plus one. And 2K plus one is coming from here. What is the computational cost for this flow net C? per each layer, whenever you are doing that correlation, you need to write a for loop spanning X1 and X2. That for loop or a couple of for loops is gonna have a cost of uh, your width, height, square. There is gonna be this dot product, which is gonna take you a cost of C. And then you are in that neighborhood. You have to do it multiple times. That's K squared. That's the computational cost of this operation. So it's costly. So this paper is saying, don't compute it for every single pair of pixels from the first feature map and the second feature map. Just do it in a neighborhood of X2s around X1. Don't do it for every single pixel of F2. And then you can reduce the cost. It's gonna be WH, D square is that neighborhood, which could be a hyperparameter under your control. So you can control the computational cost. And what is gonna be the output size of this uh, exercise? Per each pixel in your input, per each pixel of F1, you're gonna compute D square, D is in the neighborhood of X1, numbers. So you can represent that with a tensor that has this height and this width, and it has these many channels. Not only that, you can reduce the cost even further, rather than a striding X1 in your F1 every pixel, stride it every couple of pixels. Then you can reduce this output size. At the same time, you can stride X2 around X1. X2, the distance between X2 and X1 doesn't have to be one pixel, it could be two pixels. 
like what you were doing with uh, Astro's convolutions. So this way you can make it cheaper. Next session, I'm going to give you the entire architecture and then be able to use a light version of FlowNet C in addition to some other modifications. And that's going to give us FlowNet 2. I think it's a good time for me to stop. For those of you who have questions, I'll be around.